All right, we're back again, another part of the build. I'm not really one to bash someone for something, but I got my AC delete bracket, and you guys have to see this. Um, I'll cover up the name, I guess. This is the AC delete bracket. And essentially I needed this because um, when you delete the AC pump, there's a bracket that holds up your power steering and this is uh, kind of, it's gonna hold up the power steering. But the tooling marks on this bracket, I don't know how this company let this pass through their quality control or, you know that meme where the guy's all like cross-eyed from that Mr. Deeds movie, I think, and, and he's all like, looks good. And then everyone made the meme out of it. Well. That's this guy, cause look at these tooling marks. Okay, I gotta, I gotta manually focus this thing. Look at the tooling marks on these, on these holes. They're just, and every one is like that. Uh. Anyways, we're gonna try and use it. If it doesn't work, I'll have to get a new bracket. That's where we're gonna start. We're gonna start bolting up this power steering. I've actually been getting really excited about the build. As you can see, it's coming along nicely. Just buttoning up the last couple things. I'm probably gonna make this episode a little bit longer than normal because I wanna get a lot of things in this one and then hopefully get some actual visual progress going. Maybe get it on the wheels and push it out and clean it off this thing looks horrible. I got a lot of surprises coming for you guys and make sure to keep watching through the video because I had lots of parts come in. This is where our bracket mounts. Um, it's gonna mount down here to this bolt and then up one bolt here and then in this space here and it's gonna hold this power steering pump from pivoting the bracket bolts on the bottom the spacer there and then there's one up here and it fits um, however the spacer that they included in this top one here. Oh, bastard. So you can see there's a spacer that belongs here. And the one that they supplied is definitely too thick to fit in there. So this needs to be cut down like an eighth of an inch. It's really that far off. But going how their tooling holes are, um, that doesn't really surprise me. This company does supply a lot of cheaper parts and you would consider them on the same level as like eBay manifolds and stuff like that. But I figured that they could get, just get like a flat plate bracket correct. Like they, they would see and see it or something or, or water jet. One of the better ones and I thought I could get it faster so that's why I got it. It ain't custom till you cut it I guess. And I don't want to bash them cause I guess they, they still offer, there still is a marketplace for them for the guy who wants to be a budget builder. So I'll take this time to say, Powerhouse Racing, why don't you make this bracket? I'm actually gonna bring that up to Sam right now. I'm gonna text him. Sam, why don't you guys make this bracket? After like shimming down that one washer and bolting it all up, the bracket's gonna work. It's gonna hold it. It's just as haggard as the rest of the car. It's gonna be a race car. If Kent had anything to do with it, I wouldn't even have power steering, so. You do what you can. America. All right, all right, all right. This is my second trans cooler. Um, this pipe is actually gonna come up. That's where that's gonna live for the intercooler. And then this, I'm gonna put it right here, somewhere. Right, right there. And that's a good spot for that to live. So now I need to build a bracket for that. So I can pretty much, um, just use a piece of angle iron. I'm not the best at building brackets. I can bolt it to the, the fan itself and then bolt that up through the top and it should fit perfect. A couple of bolts up through the fenders, no one cares. Big bastards. Got her. Got her. Got her. My assortment of one time use drill bits. I got to. Hey, what you doing, Willis? These are probably. I wired four in my grip. See if my bracket works. Two bolts. And there's our bracket for now. It is going to need a bottom one because it's still kind of 
loosey goosey here. So I'm gonna have to mount it again somewhere else on the bottom. No, my table! Uh, what the fuck? Oh well. Uh, it's really hot still. Yeah, it's on? Yeah, it's on. First, you should be wearing a helmet. I'm not even looking at it. There's my bracket. It's very, very amateur, if I must say so myself. That should hold. Okay, here's my finished bracket. If you can see it, bolts to the side there, comes down and bolts to the bottom. The top bracket's up there. And the feet. Fittings on the bottom. One has to have a temperature sensor in it, so I put it in there, and then, yeah, it's gonna fit. All right, the fan fits. I actually have to flip it upside down the other way. I read the instructions and both fittings should be either at the top or one on the side, one on the bottom. It's not good to feed both from the bottom because you can get air pockets. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna install some of those brass fittings and then I can install my AN fittings and then we can start running the lines from the transmission to the front cooler, to the side cooler, and to the back. That's where we're at. That's what we're gonna do. Also, some of you guys are probably gonna point out that this is a puller fan and I am mounting it opposite of the wind direction. But if I'm actually moving and air is getting through stuff, it's gonna go through that big one first anyways, and this fan's not actually gonna activate. Um, this fan's mainly for if I'm just sitting and it's getting hot, or if I'm sitting and trying to cool down the car, in which case it's still gonna pull air through that way. Um, this T has to go in the top. Um, I'm putting this here because this will be my exit line, and then on this exit line, I'm actually gonna put a temperature sensor, and I'm gonna run a gauge inside the car as well. Just a cheap one, just to, to monitor temperatures. Um, this is a thermostat in the bottom. It actually turns on at like 175 Fahrenheit, and then turns off at 140, and that activates the fan. Oh, that was embarrassing. Boo Earns, ooh, it's tight, it's tight. Oh, I savagely have to do a garage cleanup because I, I don't know where any of my wrenches are. Yeah, whatever, man. I know I should be using like actual MPT fitting. I mean, I should be using like actual 90s that are AN fittings to be cool and stuff, but this is gonna work for what I need it to do. And then the sensor goes in on this side. And then the 90 goes on this side. And then after this 90, I have a uh, half inch MPT to dash six, and then I can run my dash six lines off this down. You see what I'm doing here? You guys don't need to watch the whole thing. I love you. That's the final mounting place of the cooler. If anything doesn't look right or it's not good, just send me a message and I'll try and fix it. Like if something is definitely out of whack, because I don't claim to be the best and I'm definitely not. So I do appreciate the help. So. Our front cooler is here, and it's gonna go from the trans in the bottom fitting, and then from the top fitting to one of these fittings over here, and then from one of these fittings back to the trans. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I'm gonna run the one from the top of this one to over here, I guess, first. Building AN lines again, I love it. I had to order two more fittings because I ran out. I didn't intend on running the second trans cooler. So shout out to Bumper to Bumper for getting me my fittings. Always next day, they're the best. I do use a little bit of oil on mine, on the threads, because it just, it assembles easier. This stuff isn't really made to be abused. I'm essentially watching the hose to see if it's pushing out or if it's screwing in. And it's definitely screwing in. Then I'll put this on, I'll mark where my next cut is, I'll cut it, put the other fitting on, I'll flush it out, and then I'll finally assemble it. 
I gotta do that for seven more days, I guess. God. Once again, my mic wasn't on. So we're gonna do all this again. This flange, essentially the rear end is a three bolt and the drive shaft is a four bolt. So this flange adapts a three bolt to a four bolt. So essentially I'm just down here for like 75,000 hours because I have to use an Allen key in this bolt and then I can turn it a quarter turn and then pull the Allen key out and then turn it a quarter turn again. And it's like a super fine thread bolt and it's taking me like 76 hours. I think I got older down here. I might be 30 now. Also, I need to get a microphone that doesn't need to be switched on because that's like half my problems in life is I record stuff and it's all like, the sound's not on, so I'm just stupid talking to the camera. I'll show you guys what it all looks like though. Boom, there it is. All right, so this is our plug and play link ECU. Essentially what they give you is just the ECU case this and then you have to use your factory case. Um, these are from the factory ECU, but you can see that they have plugs for um, like can and accessory ports. And um, you're gonna have to drill through the top case and then you're gonna have to use a grommet. And then you're gonna run your wire through the case with the grommet and then uh, see, you can see that it comes out an accessory loom. This is the USB port for tuning and then this one's the can port for like a uh, the can to wide band. That'll be the first one. And these other two, I don't know if I want to join them or put them in their individual ones because the the connector is actually too big and the end's actually too big to find, kind of fit it through one of these grommets. Good. So I might have to use a big oval washer style one and poke a hole through it and run both. It's not ideal, but I don't think I have another situation, another plan for that. I got the other two in another grommet. It's kind of loose in there. It's not exactly sealed. So I'm gonna put some tape around it, hopefully, and get them to squish together better. Oh yeah, now it's super tight. Come on, jerk face. I'll kill you. I swear, I don't need you that bad. Since they're both the same, I'm just gonna put a zip tie on it. And this one is my um, USB. And this one's the can, so. I can live with it. It's a lot cleaner than a lot of ECU harnesses that I've ever seen. Just for good measure, we have like these cool, thick stickers, deck nulls. I'm gonna put one on. Baller. Yes. I also really enjoy how it plugs into the factory harness. Now, if you have like a, an aftermarket harness or something that has the actual plugs for the harness that you're using, that's okay too. But a lot of people who run like the stock harness into an aftermarket ECU, they need like a jumper thing and that's just extra stuff and it all, all doesn't fit underneath that floorboard thing. So I'm glad I went with this. So you have two tile NVR 44 mil wastegates. That's my new one. You can tell because it's nice and black. And then here's my old one. You can tell because it's nice and heated purple now. But it was black. It looked like this before. And uh, this one has 13 pound springs in it. This one has seven. So we're gonna take this out, see what color springs in it. And then we're gonna match it with the appropriate seven pound spring. We're gonna run seven pounds to start. And a four port controller. So you can get four times the amount of boost which is 93, I mean 22 and a half, 12. I know it's 28. Did I lose my Allen key for the, the thing? The one and only? Of course I would. It's like a 10 mil. It's like a three mil. It's gone. No, I mean it's like a 10 mil. Oh yeah. Plan, that's no fun. Oh, I need be ready. 
Hey, hey the car is working really good. I should make a little more power. <laughs> I need to keep the bottom end together. This is probably not the best idea, but I have a feeling I'm going to use the vise for the next one. Yep. There we go. That does not look uh, like a set. That's all your springs. That looks like a lot of pounds of springs. That's... They lied to me. Black, blue, yellow? That is... Black, red, yellow. Where the fuck did you see blue there? No, no, I'm looking at the color charts on here. Oh. That would be the highest PSI. Oh. Black, red, yellow? Yes. It's a red, yellow, black. I think. Red, yellow, black? Yes, it's red. I'm gonna get the vise. That's mounted to a piece of wood. Okay, you can see that we have a whole bunch of springs and springs and combos, but we only have red, yellow, black that are matching set. So we're just gonna run red and yellow in both of them. Oh, I forget, your phone locked. And according to this, red is 5.8 and yellow 7.5. So then I can't do math very good, but that's like 13.05. A little bit under one bar boost per, per wastegate, and that'll be our base pressure. I think that should be okay. Oh, oh yeah, this works. If I push it down and you, you put screws in it. Yep. My thumbs are only good for about a minute, so that's all you got. So, no, it's all yours. That's all you. Ken, stop sending me more car parts. He's like, I bought this today. Do you even run ethanol drum? Ford modular roller bearing thrust system. It sucks so good. I hate it. Yay. Yay, two waste gates again. Thanks, Dan. We did it. Yay. Now I have extra springs again. I had more springs than I started with. Tom said there was only one spring in it. Lion fuck, Tom. Tom's a lion fuck, everybody. Hey, Tom, just wanted you to bolt it on and see what would happen. Yeah. He would have got all of the boost. Okay, so this is all, it's all Daniel's Oops. fault. Damn, Daniel. Damn. Um, we were reading the MVS, tile MVS spring rate chart, which is completely different than the MVR. Same springs. Same springs, yeah. They just, they're, they're not as high as rated. Just focused on you, because you're a bastard. Oh. Yeah, so what we thought was 13 pounds is probably only like fucking two. Eight eight maybe. So if we use the black ones and the red ones instead, we'll get 10 pounds. Or we can use the black, yellow, and red and have 14 pounds, which I think was intended when they sold it. It's probably one bar. That makes more sense now, selling it as a one bar wastegate. We're gonna make it 10 pounds. Because I'll run a four port boost controller, 10 pounds can be turned into 40 pounds instead of a three port, which could only be turned into 20 pounds. Okay, so we gotta pull these apart again. Damn. We gotta pull these apart again. We gotta pull these apart again. And not kill ourselves, okay? Period. Yeah. I'm just making you feel guilty because my thumbs hurt now. Aw. My hand hurts. Yeah, I'll stop jerking off so much. <laughs>